absolute space doesn't seem to exist. Newton's notion of absolute space is riddled with holes, but it still attracts some scientists to find it. The most famous of these are American physicists. The experiments of Albert Michael and Edward Morey. Actually, when Maxwell discovered that light is an electromagnetic wave, so he came up with radio waves, or light waves. It should travel at a fixed speed, since Newton's laws have gotten rid of the notion of absolute stillness. Therefore if it is assumed that light travels at some fixed speed, it is necessary to make it clear that this is fixed. Velocity is measured relative to something, or that there is some kind of medium that conducts light waves. Since light is considered to be a wave, and the wave itself is a medium of conduction, therefore, it is believed that there must be another medium that conducts light waves. A medium is a substance that is necessary for waves to conduct. To put it simply, if you throw a stone into the water, the surface of the water will immediately ripple in circles and circles. This can indicate the presence of waves. At this time, for the ripples in the water, the water is the medium. And the sound we hear is also a wave. And the air that surrounds us is the medium of sound waves. That's how we can talk to each other. A lot of times when you're in a plateau where the air is thin, it's very difficult for people to talk to each other, and that's why. In the case of partial vacuum, it is difficult for sound to propagate. In the search for a medium of light waves, the concept of ether was proposed. Ether is a substance. It's everywhere, even in the vacuum. People think it's like sound waves traveling through the air. In the same way that water waves travel through the surface of the water, light waves should travel through the ether. Without the ether, light waves cannot travel. Therefore according to Maxwell's theory, the velocity of the light wave must be measured relative to the ether. At this point, a different observer will see. The light came at them at different speeds, but the speed of light is constant with respect to the ether. To test this idea, we can make an imaginary. Suppose a beam of light is emitted from a light source, traveling at the speed of light through the ether. At this point, if you move through the ether towards it, then the speed at which you approach the light will be the light passing through, the sum of the speed of the ether and your own speed, and the light will be more than assuming you don't move or you move in the other direction to approach you faster. But unfortunately because of our movement towards the light source, the speed is too different from the speed of light. So it is very difficult to measure the effect of this speed difference. In addition, we know that wind is the movement of air originating from it. Traveling in the same direction when the wind blows, the speed of sound increases as the wind speed increases, and the speed of sound traveling in the opposite direction, it slows down as the wind speed slows down. Similarly, during the propagation of light, this can also happen. That is to say, since the ether is the medium through which light waves are conducted, so the speed of light increases as the speed of the ether increases, decreases as it decreases. At the same time, people still think that even in absolute space, there is also such a resting ether. If you put the earth in absolute space, then when the earth is moving. On earth, we will feel that the winds of the ether are blowing. The speed of light we measure on earth will too. It changes as the direction of the etheric wind changes. Of course, there may be a situation where it is, as there is a relative motion between the earth and the ether. Therefore, the measured speed of light results are somewhat different. And because of that, we can discover the Earth by such measurements. What kind of movement is going on with absolute space? Guided by this idea, Michael Erson and Mori began their experiments, but when they finally found out that it didn't matter, no matter how you measure the speed of light, it's the same. They realized that the ether might not exist, or that absolute space doesn't seem to exist. 